Allah's will is above man's will, correct? Okay. But so that doesn't mean he's forcing. Can you say to? Can you point to anything in creation that doesn't happen according to Allah's will? No. No. If he misguides you, no one can guide you. If he guides you, no one can misguide you. So the Quran is saying that if you don't believe in Islam, it's Allah's fault. If Allah places doubt in my heart, or if Allah chooses to misguide me, apart from Allah changing his mind, what hope do I have? Is every now and then, yeah. Speaker's Corner attracts people who have emotional instability. When you meet someone who has emotional instability like this gentleman here, you should try to meet them with patience. Try to meet them with patience. Don't bite, he's ill. Don't bite, he's paid. Don't bite, he's ill. He's ill. Leave him, he's ill. So, uncle. So, the, one of the differences between Christianity and Islam. Okay? But you did not answer my question. Well, what is your, well, I'm still waiting for a single verse that says I've got free will. You did not show me in the Bible yeah. that Jesus allowed for this disaster that happens on this earth. Like earthquakes and cancer and wars. Yes. Where does it show, so, so let's, let's, show me where in the Bible let, let's, Jesus allowed Okay, so let's talk about the difference between... Yeah, let's talk about the difference between... The Christian concept of free will. But you have to prove it from the Bible. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uncle. 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 So, so he asks me to show him where in scripture God allows people to do evil things. I'll show you very easily. It's called Genesis chapter 2. So, you said the Bible. I'm using the Bible. We believe in the Bible, so I'm using the Bible. I'm using the NRSV. Not the best, but it's good enough. Okay, so, in the book of Genesis, in chapter 3, it states, reading from verse 8, no, sorry, I'm going to read from verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that Yahweh God had made. He said to the woman, did God say to you, you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of, your, eat of it, your eyes will be opened, that you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So then, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eye, and that the tree was to be desired, that's the key word, to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Now let me expose it. Adam and Eve. Let me expose it, the significance of what you've just heard. Christians believe that will and desire are intrinsically connected. We don't believe that free will is this free-floating thing separate from context. Will is rooted in nature. Will is rooted in the passions, the desires. This is why Christ at the Garden of Gethsemane, though he himself was God, and you also asked me for the New Testament, he fell to his face and he said, not my will, but thine be done. Why did he say this? Because the divine will had to translate through human will, and human will is rooted in desire. God's will is rooted in the character and nature of God. God is good, therefore he wills what is good. In Islam, so, wait, wait, wait. In, one second. Okay. In Islam, what is good is good because Allah wills it. So when Allah wills that you have unbelief, that is good.
because it's Allah's will. So, right, reply. Reply. First, first, let's stand on this verse. Yeah. Now, Eve saw that the tree is good. Yes. Although God told her not to eat. Yes. So she disobeyed. Yes. And uh, is that good? No, of course not. Of course not. But her her but choice was rooted in her nature. Remember that passage. What she has done, listen, bad. listen, listen. You will not die. So when the woman saw, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eye, and that the tree was to be desired, so the act of rebellion came from the woman. Okay, but it means. But your Quran is saying that I don't believe because Allah makes me not believe. Let's wait. Let's, before, before we jump to Quran, let's wait here. We started let's on the Quran. No, but okay. Let's, yeah. That's, that, that means that she saw something that Allah did not, or the God of the Christians, yes. did not know about that the, the, the tree is good. No, she, of course. She felt, she felt that the tree is good. Yes. And she ate She that. desired it for wisdom. For wisdom. Yes. So, so when she eats the fruit, yes. she will get wisdom. Yes. So Allah, or God, yes. does not want wisdom for the women. No. Hold on one second. Why did he then because for, her? So, so here's, here's the thing. The, the topic of what God wants for the woman is irrelevant to the question that we're talking about. But I will entertain it because you've been so charitable to entertain my questions. So God forbade this knowledge of, of good and evil to preserve the original innocence of the human species. If the human species is innocent of the knowledge of good and evil, they are essentially children in the world. And children are not guilty of crime because children are innocent of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why we have the idea of legal culpability. Because at a certain point we deem that someone should know better. That is why God didn't want Adam and Eve to eat of the knowledge of good and evil. Because they would then be culpable for the evil that they do. However, wait, wait, wait one second. No, uncle, uncle. The topic we're talking about, the topic we're talking about is the fact that in the Christian faith, God wills what is good because he himself is good. In Islam, God wills what he wants because he is the master and the king and he can do whatever he wants. Is that fair? No. So Allah, so, so, wait, 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 wait. so Allah's will is constrained by what? Can you, first, without uh, preaching, answer my question? Yeah, but without, without, no, don't get off the topic, though. Without preaching. But don't get off the topic. So don't preach. Just, don't my, get off the topic, Uncle. My, my topic. No, not your topic. Okay. The topic you jumped into the conversation over there. So my question was to you that... About my topic? About your topic. Yes. That Jesus, the God of the Christians... Yes. ...allows yes. evil to happen. So... Right? Yes. He allows it. Yes. Although... Yes. Eve, when she ate from this apple... Yes. This is the apple of wisdom. Yes. And God does not want her to have the wisdom. Yes. Right? Is yes. That fair? Okay. Is that fair? So let's deal with this question. Okay. But I want you to notice. Oh, first, is that fair? No, Uncle. I'm going to answer your question. It's not fair. Uncle, you're trying to get off the topic. The difference is that I showed the Uncle and he agreed on camera. He agreed on camera that. Allah commands disbelief no, that no. people believe, and I'll show them the verse again because you're denying it. Let's look at what the Quran says. Allah knows. Let's no, it doesn't say that. But what happens? Let's look at let what. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Listen to this is what Muslims who do dawah. Allah. Unbelief is evil in Islam. So if Allah commands unbelief, then Allah is evil because he commands something evil. Listen. Is evil, uh, is unbelief evil? Yes. Listen. No soul can believe except by the will of Allah. He, Allah, will place doubt on those who will not 
understand. So Allah is responsible for my unbelief, according to the Quran. I'm just reading what the Quran says. So tell everybody what this verse means. It means this verse. That God yes. will not uh, force evil unless this person he will not force any force. It's not saying that. It's not saying that. By other verses. By other verses. No, what does this verse because, mean? Because we have to take all the Yes, of course, but what does this verse mean? It means this verse. That if you choose yes. to be evil. No, that's not what it says. What does this verse mean? When it says, who, who is the he here? Allah. Allah. Okay. And when it says, he will place doubt, what does that mean? Yes, as a response to your choice. What does it mean? It means that when you choose evil, Allah will make it easy for you. No, that's not what it means. Yes. What does it mean, he will place doubt? What does those words mean? He will place doubt. It means if you choose the, the wrong path, he will put, instead of putting... Where, 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 there's no he, there's no, no. You you're, see, you're putting into the words. No, no, I'm taking this verse no. and relating it to... I want verse. you to deal with what this no, verse no, says. Do no, I can't do that. Yeah, I can't do that. Allah, Muslims do this all the time no, no, here no, in the park. Okay, listen, listen. But when we do it to their book, they complain all the time. See, you cannot take one verse and impose your idea on it. You have to take the whole... Show me a verse where Alice says human beings gave, have free will. I gave you, I told you. Yes. 256. Yes. And that says, There's let no there be compulsion. no compulsion in religion. Yes. But that verse is talking about Muslims can't put a dagger to your throat and force you into Islam. Which is the will of God. That is what that verse means. It does not mean that Allah isn't the one who brings you into Islam or brings you into doubt. Because you yourself know that the same Quran says that Allah is the one who opens the chest to receive Islam or closes the chest to receive Islam. Is that correct? According not, to the Quran. Not, not in your yeah, no. result. Uh, no. As a result. No. Not from the start. You have no verse that says human beings have free will. No, you don't. Where does it say human beings have free will? Show me. And where was the, it was 66, wasn't it? The one about ascending into the heavens, 66. The one about ascending into the heavens. Uh, 125. 66, 125, was that it? Or 60, 125? Uh, 6, 125. Uncle, let you find your verse. I just want to read this. So this is why I am objecting to the God of this book and calling you to a better God, the God of the Bible. Because in this Quran, and I'll let you read your passage, uncle, it says, those whom Allah in his plan willeth to guide, he openeth their breast to Islam. Those whom he, that's Allah, willeth to lead astray, he maketh their breast closed and constricted as if they were to climb up to the skies Thus doth Allah heap the penalty on those who refuse to believe. So Allah is the one who gives you the doubt. Allah is the one who leads you into doubt. And then he punishes you for it. If any government did this, commanded you to do something, and then punished you for doing it, you would call that government unjust, as this uncle does. Okay, so what passage are we going to? Yeah. What passage? Uh, okay, I don't know the number of the... We need the number, uncle. Can you help me with the number? I think it's uh, verse 25. Let me, let me just find it. Al-Kahf, which number? I guess 17. 17? It might be 17. Okay, 17. Hold on one second, let me find it please. Let me, let me find it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the prophet and messenger and book let me for find people it. to follow. Those people who disobey, they choose to disobey. Uncle, uh, uncle, Allah we're having a conversation. Let's focus on our conversation. So Surah 17, 29. Just like when the... Just like when... Is it the cave? Let's, let's find it, let's find it. Surah 17, 29. Let me get there. 
18. 18. 18. 18. Let's uh, find 29. it. 29. Let's find it. Let's find it. Sort of 1829. Okay, go. Can you read it? Yeah. Okay. Say, the truth is from your Lord. Let him who will believe. And let him who will reject it for the wrongdoers, we have prepared a fire whose smoke and flames like the walls and roof of a tent will hem them in. If they implore relief, they will be granted they will be granted water. Go on, go on. So he is Allah yes, yes. say the truth from Allah. Yes. Those who believe will believe, believe, yes. And those who reject and but, but who and who gives them the re uh, belief? They, themselves. No, they according to the Quran, not your opinion, uncle. According to the Quran, uh, your Quran says that Allah gives you the belief. I've read you the verses. It doesn't work, but it doesn't work for him. But Our will, according to the Quran, is an expression of Allah's will. You know, even Jesus says the Lord our God is one, and they say the Lord our God is the three in one. Uncle, you know, uncle, no, stop no, being rude. I'm not your uncle. I'm uncle, not your uncle. So, so let, let's just move away because he's he's shouting. Let's just move away. I moved away for you. Let's move away from this guy. Come on, uncle. We moved away for you when you wanted to move away. I'm going to address it. I'm going to address it. Whoever wants to believe, I'll yes, believe. Whoever yes. Whoever wants to reject, yes. He can reject. Okay, let me ask you this question, Uncle. According. Can I give you another verse? No, you, another let, verse. no, no let's not. Let, no, let's not jump around, finish, Uncle. Let's, finish, not let's not jump around. Let's not jump around. So. Let him finish. Let, answer me this question, Uncle. No, no Uncle. Uncle. If you can't control yourself, I will just have to raise my voice. Yeah. So unfortunately, he's this. This happens with this guy. He's also one of these emotionally unstable people. So, in you are emotionally unstable, you can never shut up. Come here and debate. Come here and debate. Yes. Yes. You stand there. We'll all debate together. We'll all debate together. Okay. We'll all debate together. We'll all debate together. We'll all debate. Together. We'll all debate, together. We'll all debate right. So. No. No. We're trying to have a conversation. We're trying to have a conversation. Make me. 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 We're having a conversation. You, 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 all you're going to do. Are you pro? Or, what is fruitful about this? What is fruitful about this? What is fruitful? You're just interrupting. No. 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 Uncle. Uncle. I want no because no uncle no no we're not going to do that we're going to talk about the passage that you have just brought up right and I'm going to ask you a question what is supreme Allah's will or man's will is man's will above Allah's will no Allah's will is above man's will correct so can you say to can you point to anything in creation that doesn't happen according to Allah's will no so our belief in Allah comes from Allah himself his will is that true or not the belief is from ourselves the belief because he gave us the choice the will the will, the will yes, from comes ourselves. from Allah Allah allows it to happen so you're so you're saying that human will is above Allah's will no so you have freedom you have freedom, freedom so Allah's will human freedom. will is above Allah's will you have a freedom but there there's there's okay if you I would argue that this brother doesn't know his Quran I'm reading to you the Quran yeah, I'm reading and I've read you the Quran, I, Uncle. Read you I've read you the Quran, can Uncle. Can I read you another verse? Yes, of course, absolutely. Okay. Uh, it's Al Insan. Al Insan, how many numbers? Two. That's uh, Surah Al Insan. Inna hadinahu sabila imma shakira wa imma kafura. We have guided this. We have guided the way. He is either thankful or a rejecter or a uh, disbeliever. This is another verse. Which passage so, is? It's uh, Insan. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know the number, but it's Insan 2 and 3. Yeah. Surah 1. Al Insan. Chapter uh, uh, the man is a human. Which, which, uh, which uh, chapter? I, 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 I don't remember uh, by, by chapter like this. I'll, 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 I'll uh, my Quran is there. I'll, I'll get uh, it. Uh, what, what I'm saying is, 
No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to him. You will never talk to I'm me. talking to because him. You're no, it's oh, because you just have the same you're script. Sticky, you're sticky I invited power. to talk you to you power. in private and you, you don't want to do it. You are sticky talk power. to me on Say Skype. Yes. Talk to me on Skype. Say yes. We're connected on Skype. Power. Talk to me on Skype. No, 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 yeah, yeah, 76. 76. Surah 76. Surah 76. Because when we try to talk to you, you turn away. 76. He wants to talk to me in private. So, and what, uh, what passage? Uh, two and three. Two and three. Verily, we created man from a drop of mingled sperm, which actually is an error. That's okay. false. Why? In order to try him, human beings are not created from a drop of sperm. One drop of sperm has thousands of sperm cells. It is not a drop of sperm from which you are created. The Quran gets its embryology wrong. In order to try him, so we gave him the gifts of hearing and sight. We showed him the way, whether he be grateful or ungrateful, on his rests on his will. Okay, so that explains so, that you have a freedom of choice to choose the right path or the wrong path. And this contradicts, and this, co this contradicts. Does Allah send to hell who he wills? If they choose to go to hell. Answer the question, does Allah send no, to hell whom he wills? You see, Muslims, Muslims contradict themselves in the park just to win an argument. Allah sends to hell whom he wills and he guides to righteousness whom he wills. That's what the Quran teaches. You have to choose your way. He gave you the freedom of choice. Otherwise, he will be... Can anyone resist the will of Allah? Can anyone resist the will of Allah? Can anyone resist the will of Allah? Yes, see, there is a will of Allah that nobody can resist. For example, that is me. What, that sorry? Whoever Allah wishes to guide, nobody can misguide. There you go. Whomever Allah wishes to guide, no one can misguide. And how does that verse finish? Everyone who wants to be misguided, no one can misguide. And anyone whom Allah wishes to misguide, okay. no one can guide. Which that? passage of that in the Quran, please? Please do. You see the Quran, no, uncle, uncle, one, no, the, the, the dichotomy of our argument rests on this, okay? We have two kinds of passages in the Quran. One which you have evidenced, this idea that implies that in some way we have a choice. And then other passages in the Quran which assert that the will of Allah is supreme in every single thing that happens. That everything happens because he wills it. Yes. Yes. There you go. There you go. So, so, Allah gives you a will. But he is the one ultimately who is responsible for how you use that will. According to the Quran. Your Quran has just been quoted to you. If Allah misguides me. If Allah. Uncle, answer me this question. And answer me this question. If Allah puts doubt in my heart. No, he will not unless you choose the doubt. No, it doesn't say that. Where does it say that? Where does it say Allah will. Where does it say you choose the doubt? He started devil, he want to blame Allah. As, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophet and messenger and books for mankind to be uh, obedient, but people chose to disobey uh, uh, the prophet and messenger of Allah and reject his book and follow the step of uncle, Shaitan, uncle. which So I'm just going to have to raise my voice. Raise, raise, raise. Because I'm trying to talk to you. Now, no, now, please, no, uncle. Me and you are able to have a conversation. I'm not having to shout. So I want to ask you a question. It says in Surah 10, Ayah 100, that Allah will place doubt in my heart. Now, one second. My question to you is, if Allah places doubt in my heart, or if Allah chooses to misguide me, Apart from Allah changing his mind, what hope do I have? Answer that question, please. The hope is that you have a free will. You can always change your mind of the way you want. If, let's say, you are now in the way of the devil and you decided to repent and go back to the way of Allah and become a good... And is it Allah that opens up my heart to that? Yes. There you go. If, so Allah is the one opening to, up my heart. But you have to start. You have to do one step. Can you do that? You, so you do that independent of God? Your choice is, is, is yours. So you do that independent of God? Yes. 
Yes, your choice. No. Yes, independent. So we'll, we'll just change the, the nature of our critique. Okay. Because what this uncle who has, I would say, contradicted mainstream Islamic teaching done, he has said that there is something that is independent of the will of Allah. Now I'd like to ask all the Muslims, okay. do they agree that there are things independent of the will of Allah? That they emerge out of themselves? They do. So Allah's will is not sovereign. Uh, hold on one second. Hold on Watch one them second. contradict themselves. Hold on one second. Is Allah's, can, so Allah's will is not absolutely sovereign? Can I answer? Is Allah's will absolutely sovereign? One question. Do you believe? Is Allah's will absolutely sovereign? Do you believe? Is Allah's will absolutely sovereign? You don't know. Is Allah's will absolutely sovereign? I don't know if you're a Muslim actually, so no. Is Allah's will absolutely sovereign? Oh no. Yeah, you answer. Go on. You answer. No, 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 no. You talk, you talk. Is Allah's will absolutely sovereign? It is absolutely sovereign. Let me finish. Let me finish. But he gave from his sovereignty, he gave you the choice. So it's it's part of his sovereignty. Yes. To give you the choice to choose whether you want the right path or the wrong path. Yes. It's part of his sovereignty. Yes. See? Yes. There's no contradiction. So Allah's Allah gave you by his own will Yes. the choice. But Allah claims in the Quran to misguide and to place result, doubt. As a result. So Allah is responsible. Listen. As a result. Listen, yes, this yes. is the point. Yes. Allah is res claiming responsibility for creating unbelief. No, 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 no. no. Uh, no That's what he just said. See, no, listen, Allah is said responsible listen, listen, for said, creating said, unbelief. I said as a result. Does Allah say that he guides and misguides? Yes. There you go. So he guides and misguides. Does Allah say, does Allah say that, okay, I, for the sake of the argument, for the sake of the argument, I'm going to concede to his point. I'm going to concede it for the sake of the argument so that we can move it forward and not get bogged down. So for the sake of the argument, I concede you make that initial choice. But then Allah is claiming that he is the one that misguides you. That he is the one no, that puts no, doubt no, in your no. heart. And they're still saying no. no. no because he says it's clearly in the Quran. It says clearly in the Quran. Let, let's look at what it says clearly. Let's look at what it says clearly. You're claiming, he's claiming that even if you choose the wrong, if you choose the right path, that Allah will force the misguidance no, to you. No, 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 no. Listen, Surah 10, Ayah 100. Okay. Let's see what the Quran says clearly. No soul can believe except by Allah's will. If he doesn't believe his Quran, perhaps he needs a better religion. No soul can believe except by Allah's will. And he, Allah, will place doubt on those who will not understand. So Allah is claiming to create unbelief. Now answer me this, is unbelief evil? Of course. Of course. Okay. So Allah, a fickle, pre, 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? A, a fickle God is imposing according to his will, abstractly from any other consideration, what he wills onto his creation. He guides whom he wills and he misguides whom he wills. He opens and he closes. If he misguides you, no one can guide you. If he guides you, no one can misguide you. So the Quran is saying that if you don't believe in Islam, it's Allah's fault. And if Allah is responsible for you not believing, how is it just that he then sends you to hell? Yeah, exactly. okay, okay. Where is the justice? Okay, okay. Can I answer? Can I answer? Now, Jesus, your God, Jesus, yes. right? Yes. Okay, let's talk about our God. Okay. Does he, does he permit people to disbelief? Yes. He, he allows it? Yes. Is that good? Let's deal with that. He's, he's, I'm going he's, to deal with that. Let, let's deal with that. Let's is deal with that. I'm going to answer this question. It says in the scriptures, that God desires that all shall be saved. All shall be saved. That is God's desire. Okay. Now clearly Christ teaches that narrow is the way and hard is the path and long that leads to salvation. 
but broad is the way and easy and short is the way that leads to destruction. So how do we understand these two passages? It's simple. We Christians believe that God wills what is good because it is good, because it reflects his nature. Let me finish. Let me finish. You asked a question. Let me answer. Let me answer. I just quoted. I just quoted. Okay, so let me finish. Are you, I, so you let me finish. Let me finish. You have, and I have quoted the book. I have quoted the book. So Jesus said. So now you're asking me to quote it again. But so you prolonged everything that I'm going to say now. So Jesus said that long is the way, broad is the way, and short that leads unto destruction. And narrow is the way, and difficult is the way. And long that leads to salvation. And happy are those that find it. And, and woe to those that find the short and easy way. So, also in the scripture, Paul teaches, the apostles teach, that God desires that all shall be saved. And in Genesis chapter 3, it says that the woman of her desire rebelled against God. So our concept as Christians of free will is far more nuanced than the Islamic concept. It isn't something that sits at the top of a hill. It is rooted in our nature, like God's will is rooted in, our nat in his nature. God as a God of love wishes to have a loving relationship with us. God is love. And so God desires that of your free choice you choose to love him. And so he permits you to act according to your will and according to your nature. What, what you said, what you said, you just confirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the same. He gives you the freedom to accept or reject. That's not what the Quran says. As you said, I'm talking to him, uncle. 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 Call. You are bursting. No, I'm talking to him. How would you like to reply to what I said? Okay. I, I, no, I'm talking to him. God. And keep your hands to yourself. Go on. Can you, when you answer your question, not the Christian way. You don't go in the preacher mode. The preaching mode distorts the answer. Yeah, yeah, go on. Just go to the point. Yes. Now, the point that you have said that God wants the people to believe. Right? And the Christian, the Christian to believe, Jesus wants people to believe. He permits, yeah, 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 he, he permits people to, to choose. The same. He desires. The same in the Quran. No, it says in the Quran that Allah opens the chest to receive Islam whom he wills, and he closes the chest whom he wills. Yes. Let me give you the verse. It's in uh, Go on. Surah 4. Surah 4, yeah. Yeah. 27, 28. Yeah. So the force, 27, 28. According to his Bible, God desired all the Allah, 27 and 28. Are you talking to me or are you talking to him? You can talk to him if you want, but I'll go away and do my own talks. Okay. So, Allah doth wish to turn to you, but the wish of those who follow their lusts is that ye should turn away from him far, far away. Allah doth wish to lighten your difficulties, for man was created weak in the flesh. Yes. Okay. So Allah yes. wants his desire yes. is for people to repent. Yes. Yes. He does, it's, not, yes. it's not there is a desire for Allah yes. to be able to go to hellfire. Yes. So allow me, allow me to nuance my argument, because I concede, I'm conceding, I concede that you have evidenced, why I have conceded that you have evidenced in the Quran that Allah gives people will. But I am still I maintaining, you, let me finish. You, I told you also that Allah wants you no, listen, to repent. But, it all, but this is the contradiction in the Quran. Why? Because what you've got in the Quran yes. is you've got one verse of the Quran yes. which says that Allah opens the chest to Islam whom he wants yes. and he closes the chest to, who, to Islam if, if whom he wants. Him, That's what he wants. I'm talking to him, stop being rude. So I'm talking to him. Now notice, notice how the Muslims can't control themselves. 
Notice how the Muslims can't control themselves. So I'm talking to you, so I'm going to continue to talk to you. So, so don't condemn your prophet. Your prophet it was the one that banged a six-year-old. Sorry, a nine-year-old. From where? Yeah, go on. From yeah, you where bring us back. Go on. Yeah. But I have to answer this issue. No, no. I, I want to from talk. Where, we're talking about will. Where, we're talking about wait, the will. We're talking from about where, the will. Okay, we'll come back to the will. No, no. We're talking about the will. No, we're going to talk about the will. No, we're talking about the will. So, ladies and gentlemen, let, let's let's just let's just move away again and continue our conversation. Come on, uncle. Let's go. Let's go this side and continue our conversation. Come on, uncle. Come on, uncle. Come on, uncle. Come on, come on, uncle. Let, let, let's, let's, uncle, are you talking to me, uncle? Uncle. So. So. So, uncle, uncle, uncle. So, we're talking about the will. I'm not changing. I'm not getting off the topic, uncle. So we're going to talk about this. No, you remember, you jumped into my conversation over there. I yes, you. yes, I did. I did. That's true. You're quite right. You're quite right. But that is the topic we're talking about. Okay. So let's let's just delineate some of the differences that have been established. What about if we stop on this verse now? Let, let, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to run away from this verse. Okay. I am happy to concede. I challenge the uncle to show me where in the Quran it said human beings had free will. I'm happy to concede that he has demonstrated from the Quran that human beings have free will. I'm happy to concede that, but it doesn't diminish my argument. Because my argument is that Allah misguides you. And that Allah is the one who decides how your will will be enacted. Let me finish. Let me finish. It's a supreme principle in Islamic theology that Allah's will is paramount and supreme. That everything happens according to Allah's will. Okay. That's what Muslims say. Now this uncle may not believe that. That's fine. That's his belief. He's entitled to that. The Quran, the Quran teaches that Allah places doubt in your heart. As a result. That he misguides you. As a result. Doesn't say as a result. Well, we, from, it we does understand. not say as a result. We All we have. All no, one second. See, you don't teach us what let me finish. One, let me finish. I, I tell you what's in let me finish. Religion. Let me finish. I know my religion more let than me you. finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I, I would argue you do not. Let me finish. Thank you. Thank you. One second, sister. The, the Quran teaches something very different from the Christian faith about God. And it's really important. Because if a government commanded you to do X and then punished you for doing X, it would be unjust. Now, it says in the Quran that Allah places doubt in your heart. It says in the Quran that if Allah chooses to misguide you, no one can help you. Now, remember that because he's saying that if you choose to repent, then it's all okay. But if Allah is the one that is misguiding you, you have no hope of repentance, can I, can I except that Allah guides can I, you aright. Can I explain that? So please. Okay. The gentleman is saying that even if you choose the right path, or choose to repent, or choose to be righteous, Allah will misguide you if he wants. That's wrong. That's wrong. It's not what Allah, the Quran says. Allah will never misguide you if you choose the right the right path. But how can you choose? Yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. It's a fair point. Allah will only misguide you if you choose the wrong path. Doesn't say that. It does say that. And carry on, it's, carry on. So this is what we believe uh, from the. You cannot you cannot choose one verse and generalize. It's not one verse. It's multiple verses. I gave you many many verses. Yes, which, and what? Which, which which explains that a human being has a free choice. And Allah wants the human being to it be It does not explain repent. that, uncle. It does not yes, explain it. No, listen, you, listen, 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 no, listen. Surah 6, Ayah 125. Listen, uncle, finish, uncle, finish, uncle finish, listen. No, uncle, listen. No, 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 uncle. Don't interrupt him. Those who, Allah, in... Keep your hands to yourself. Those who, uncle. Let me finish. Listen, listen. Oh, come on. Those whom Let Allah willeth to die. If Allah Let chooses to misguide, am I on Let the right path or the wrong path right now? Ten times. Yeah. I heard it. Okay. Yeah. Can I respond? Yes, but you. But without interruption. But no, 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 uncle. Without uncle, I uncle. You. Let him finish. Uncle. I you all the time yes. To, 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 uncle. Okay. So, so make make your Let's response make to what I'm saying. Let's make yes. it fair. Okay. Shall we time it? So, okay, if you want. Okay. Can we get someone to time it? 
We're going to do three minutes. Finish, three just minutes. Finish. Okay, let me finish, and I can give you the chance. And yep. you finish, and I, you give me the chance. Okay. Let, let oh, him get the time up. Let him get the time up. The, the, the gentleman, what's your name? Wait, let him get the time up, Uncle. Oh, yeah. We're going to oh, do three no, minutes, three minutes. No, 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 no. What's your, uh, your name? Brother? Yeah, ready? Your Go. Okay. Three minutes. Okay, the gentleman claims that Allah, God, forces the human being to choose the misguided way or the, de the devil's way, which is totally wrong. And that's injustice. Allah, by His will, help you to choose the right path. If you start, if you choose yourself first the right path, He will make it easy for you to follow the right path. If you choose the devil's path or the wrong path, Allah also will make it easy for you to go the devil's way. That's what the verses means, and we derive this meaning from multiple verses, not from one verse. And I gave him the proof from many verses that Allah gave the human being the right to choose. And also I gave him a verse that Allah wants people to repent. Allah does not want people to go to hellfire. So that if you compile all the verses together, you will understand that the will of Allah is as a result for your will. So you choose first, and Allah, His will is based on your will after that. Okay, so you've done. You you've still, still got. You've still, still got one minute. Okay, okay. Now, one minute thirty. Now I give you a question. God ordered the devil to bow to Adam. Do you believe that, that in the Bible? That uh, to 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 bow down to what He created with His own hand. Adam. Yeah, Adam. Yeah. No, we don't believe that in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. So you don't. So why why he's devil then? He 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 refused to the order of God, right? The this devil, is your time, Uncle. The devil is refused refused. Uh, sorry, sorry. The devil refused to order or to obey God. Okay. And so Allah, as a result, punished him by sending him out of paradise. You see, it's the same principle. The same principle. If you choose. To disobey God, Allah will punish you. The way He punished all the people of Nuh, uh, the people who did not want to join Nuh in the in the ship, what happened to them? They were destroyed. That's why God sent prophet and messenger to warn them, to warn them and yes. to guide them yes. and to tell them the right path to yeah. obedience to God. Yes. Whoever choose disobedient, God will not force him into obedience, but he will let him. And on the day of a judgment, he will punish him and have fire. Yes, and this is what it's all about. It, our life is a test. And we have the choice. Time. Time. Okay. So three minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, if a government forced you to do X and then punished you for doing X, that government would be unjust. The Quran teaches the supreme sovereignty of their God, that their God's will is not subject to any other consideration. And the Quran teaches that by Allah's will, you have a will. But your will itself is dependent moment by moment on Allah's will. It says in the Quran, in Surah 6, 1, 2, 5, those whom Allah in His plan. Whose plan? Allah's plan. So Allah has a plan for you. That's what it's talking about. Whom Allah willeth to guide. He openeth their breast to Islam and those whom He willeth to lead astray. He maketh their breasts closed and constricted as if they had to climb up to the skies. So Allah is the one who guides you to Islam and the one who leads you astray. It says in the Quran that if Allah guides you, no one can misguide you. And if Allah misguides you, nobody can guide you. So, 
your will, even your initial choice to do good or to do bad is because of Allah's will. And that means that Allah is punishing you because of what Allah makes you do. In Surah 10, Ayah 100, it states that no soul can believe what no soul can believe except by the will of Allah. So the Quran is not saying it's down to your initial choice. The Quran is saying it's down to Allah's initial choice. And he will place doubt on those who will not understand. So you don't understand because Allah makes you not understand. And then Allah punishes you for not understanding. That is unjust and very different from the concept of free will and God in Christianity. So, uncle, you reply. This gentleman, I, I know the verse. Know yeah, 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 carry on. Okay. This gentleman is claiming that Allah is forcing, is, is using his will as a force to force people who want the guidance not to get, not to be guided, or those who wants to be uh, to go to the, in the in the wrong path, not to let them go to the right path, which is completely wrong. That's his, his understanding, but it's not what the Quran says. Okay, the Quran says clearly, and that verse refutes his argument. Verily, that's in Ar Ra'd 13, 11. 13, 11, please. Verily, Allah will not change the good condition of people as long as they do not change their state their state of goodness themselves by committing sins and by being ungrateful and disobedient to Allah so what does this verse mean Allah will not change the situation of people unless they change what's inside them so it means Allah's will is a result to the human will is not does not precede the human will it's a result of what the man chooses if he chooses to be bad and like what the, the uh, people of Noah, for example they chose not to be in the ship with Noah. they chose to disobey allah they chose to uh, ascribe partners with allah so what happened to them they were destroyed same way uh, so this uh, this verse uh, can you can you reply regarding uh, uh, those people who descend into a climb so they don't have uh, their breast will be like uh, like, yeah, like difficult and breathing yes uh, of course uh, this verse also explains chapter 6 1 to 5 verse 1 to 5 Yes, explains that فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ The one who wants Allah guides, he will make it easy and he will open his chest to Islam. وَمَنْ يُرِدْ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُ What Allah wants, whom Allah wants to misguide, if they choose the misguidance, as we stated, he will make his chest tight as if he is going above in the sky. And that verse proves that if you go above in the sky, the oxygen level will be less. The oxygen level will be less. This is another miracle of the Quran 1400 years How ago. How did Muhammad know that if you go in the sky, the oxygen Time, level. time. How did Muhammad know that if you go up into the sky, the oxygen is less? It's called climbing mountains. <laughs> There's no such thing as a miracle in the Quran. No it's total baloney. No Every people, no mountains. Muhammad went up a mountain himself. That's how he knows. That was the cave that he received revelation in. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I accept that this uncle truly believes in the freedom of man's will. He believes it, but his Quran does not believe it. Listen to these words. They couldn't be clearer in terms of the English language. No soul can 
believe except by the will of Allah. Case closed. You can't believe unless Allah wills that you believe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I accept that if Allah wills that you believe that every step towards righteousness in the Islamic worldview gets easier according to the Islamic worldview. That if Allah chooses that you don't believe that your path towards damnation gets easier because the Quran says that. The Quran says that your choices are an operation of something that Allah has put in you. But Allah is the one who decides your direction. In Surah 6, Ayah 125, it said that Allah had a plan. Allah's plan can't change. Did you all hear that? Surah 6 says that Allah's plan cannot change. Those whom Allah in his plan willeth to guide. Who can change the plan of Allah? I would like these Muslims to answer that question. Can a human being change the will of Allah? The answer is no. And if the answer is no, then Allah is like a government that makes you do something and then punishes you for doing it. We Christians have a better concept of God. God wills that all should be saved. But people choose according to their corrupt nature. God gives them all the gift of salvation, but not everybody chooses to accept it. And that's the difference. Uncle, how would you reply? What, what, I, what I'm saying? No, Uncle, I'm asking you. Uh, I'm talking to you, Uncle. God, you He's God uh, for salvation. Okay, do you want to stop? His son to be Uncle, I'm asking you. No, no, we're not talking to you. We're talking to him. You don't have to talk to me. I have explained that this gentleman is not understanding the right way of how we Muslims believe. Okay? Because he's taking only one verse and he is understanding it the wrong way. In fact, there is one sect which believes like what he believes. We call them the Qadariya, the, the people who think that Allah forces uh, his will on human beings. So there is no choice for them, which is completely wrong. Allah's will is subject according to the faith, not to, according to everything. For example, you don't have a choice of being born in, uh, in Britain, for example, or being a wife, or being uh, in this age. That's not really a choice. That's the choice of Allah or the, the Almighty. And you don't have the choice also of when to die. That's the choice of Allah. That's the will of Allah. There are certain things you don't have a choice for. You are not. You don't have a choice what to 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 be educated or not to be educated. Sorry, that's your will. Sorry, that's not. I mean. There are certain things which you don't have choice, and there are certain things which you have choice. The things that you have a choice is the belief. If you believe, that's your choice. And I prove to him by the Quran, there is no compulsion in religion. No when you're ready, Uncle. Okay. So I think I have, I have explained to him that Allah in the Quran wants people to repent. Just like what he said in the, uh, according to Jesus, Jesus wants people to believe. So does Allah. He wants people and Allah will not punish any person who wants the belief. Otherwise, it will be unjust. Uh, why their doctrine, it says that they, he is God because he desired for people salvation and salvation is not free. He killed his own son, sent his own son to be killed, and humiliated on the cross. This is why nobody so talks. This is why I don't want to talk to blood, you. But no, yeah, yeah. Because no, no matter what we're talking no about, blood, you always no come back to the script. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you're, and now you're, you're just blaming. wasting his time. No, no, he he's blaming wasting your time God, right now. And he's talking this is your about time. He's wasting. Of Christianity this is still God, your time. You're giving it up to him. Why? He's got desire. Okay, Uncle, it was a real he, pleasure talking to you. Real pleasure. You're such a nice man. You're such a nice man, Uncle. I would like to give you a gift, if I may. No, no. I mean, 
I could give you a Bible if you want, but I'd like to give you a different gift. A proper book. Not some little cheap thing. There you go. There you go. This is my gift to you. That's why he doesn't like to talk to me. Let me just check something. What is it? It's a book. It's a book about grace, which is actually the topic that we were talking about. This is the okay. follower this of uh, Paul. Yeah, it's a Christian book. Grace, faith and blood. So, uh, follower of, uh, of Paul, the deceiver, so, who opposed Christ's teaching. This is my gift to you, yeah, gift. and I hope you, you enjoy it. For me? I'm afraid. I, I can accept it, of course. I accept it, but I'm afraid I'm not very good in reading. Well, read it at your own pace, even but if it's so like a page a year. About, uh, about okay. grace, which is the kind of topic we've just been talking about. We've been talking about this very topic. See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, I have a confirmed belief in Islam. That's fine. I'm not giving it. I'm not giving it to you. Want to waste, I don't want to waste your book. Uh, okay, please, that's please, fine. Maybe, that's fine. I offered it in grace. If you didn't want to accept it in grace, no, that's no, entirely I, up to you. I it, but I, no, I, maybe, have maybe, a good maybe, day, uncle. Maybe somebody else will take, care. take care. You have a good day. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. So, okay, guys. So, there is a fundamental difference. I'm just going to do a wrap up. Our conversation is over, Uncle, you know? Just having a, a, a wrap-up. There's a fundamental difference between our visions of God in Islam and Christianity. In the Christian faith, God desires that all should be saved. He loves the world so much that He sent His only Son that whomever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. God wills that all should be saved, but because God is love, he wants you to have a loving relationship with Him. He wants you to enter into that loving relationship freely and of your own accord. God does not will evil. He permits evil, but He doesn't will it Himself. Now, the God of the Quran, by comparison, is a capricious, fickle, unjust God who guides and misguides whomever he wills into the truth and into error. And if he guides you into error, no one can help you. And if he guides you into truth, no one can mislead you. But that means that when you face God on Judgment Day, it's actually God who is responsible for you not believing. So yes, Allah gave you this thing that is described like something like free will, but you can't use it to believe in Him unless He wills it. And that means that Allah is responsible for your disbelief. Now the difference between me and the uncle is this. He does not believe that Allah is the one who wills your belief and disbelief. I accept that that is the uncle's sincerely held belief. But I believe that he has misunderstood his own Quran because Islamic theology holds up as the supreme principle of their theology the will of Allah as all sovereign over all things, including your will. But the Christian faith holds up that the supreme theological principle of God is God's love. So even God's love affects the way God's will operates. And that is why God gives us real, genuine free will. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.